Hey there, folks and friends, Connecting Dots here. It's August 5th, 2014. Okay, i got a series of uh, great uh, stories here coming up re regarding the uh, Pacific Ocean. Uh, one on Google laying a massive cable to give us apparently quicker internet. How they found a mountain in the bottom of the, uh, of the ocean. That's the image you're looking at right now, an extinct volcano. And also how you've been hearing about these seals suffering from uh, neurotoxins on the West Coast while the Washington University of Washington, I should say, came up with a predictive model. And I got some unbelievable footage here last night. I was over at a friend's place, had my camera with me, and I was telling him about though there's no birds here apparently on the west coast. He says, what? He says, go look out front here. There's probably a bunch of birds there. You won't believe the footage I got. So for Dana to come out and said that he's traveled 200 kilometers along the Sunshine Coast in British Columbia and didn't see a single bird, no crows, that's what he said, no insects, boy, he's going to be shocked when he sees the footage I have. Okay, before I jump into stories, though, as I mentioned, I can't uh, leave any comments anymore. Google has censored me. I opened up a YouTube channel. Used to be able to leave comments. Now I can't. Uh, you know, I got to have uh, Google Plus, which is kind of like you or opening up your Facebook account and Facebook saying, no, sorry, you can't post anything anymore unless you open up a Google Plus. You'd say, what the hell, you know? So I refuse to, uh, you know, join a co corporation that's been censoring me for years. And uh, yeah, Stephen, uh, Stephen Scherer says, your work on the radiation and hope and the cascades was excellent. Nobody else spotted that. Thank you very much. And I want to add to that, that in 2011, when I did the Cross Canada radiation tour, I went back and forth again across Canada doing the radiation monitoring. When I stopped in Ottawa, I was set up here, I believe, uh, by Arnie Gunderson and, and the rest of these people because I was asked to on my phone. Per someone called me up on my phone asking me if I would do an interview. I said, yeah, sure, no problem. We met in Ottawa. I gave him an interview roughly about an hour and 20 minutes long. He never sent me a copy. The video or the, uh, the, the interview was never posted on his website as he promised. And only uh, to receive a phone call two days after I'd left Ottawa, I'm on the road. I think it was near New Brunswick at that point I get a phone call he tells me that Arnie Gunderson is now asking me or asking him to tell me that if I would like to send my radioactive samples to Arnie so he could have them analyzed and I said no too late uh, I don't want to deal with Arnie for one thing I'd already had bad feelings about him and also um, I, did, I told him that I had uh, Dr. For Christopher Busby here at the University of Ireland that was willing to take my samples. And lo and behold, a month later, as you all know, uh, Dr. For Christopher Busby lost his position. He was terminated at the University of Ireland. So what side am I on? I'm uh, together with the good people. I'm not going to promote people that are lying. There's no doubt about it. I've posted enough videos here. There's more life than you can shake a stick at here on the Pacific Ocean right where I am. And uh, another comment here. Did you see Jay Snip's four latest video? Yes, sir, Ree Bobs, and I'll get into that in a second. And of course, he goes on to say, what do you have against Monty? I can't get into that. My videos are limited to 15 minutes, but if you go to connectingdots1.com, you'll see how I've connected those dots. They all play in together. And this latest one, Jay Snip 4, he shows his true colors. Now, before I get into that, Miss Justice Forever, she says, if the microscopic life is dead and the sea plant dead and the rest is dead, dying, then the fish and all the other seafood would be severely affected. If that would be the case, the price of seafood would go up big time. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even be necessary to check the coastline. Enough to go in the supermarket and check the price of seafood. Know that No doubt that huge amounts of radiation is pouring in the ocean, and this will eventually cause irreversible damage. But the situation is not yet as bad as they promote it, and this will only discredit the honest anti-nuclear folks who voice genuine concerns. This lie is damaging the reputation of everyone who is against the nuclear industry because they will all be considered loopy due to this lie and scaremongering. This is undermining the word anti-nuclear. This has to stop. She's absolutely right. This, what, this is what this is all about, folks. I swear to God, this is what I found. You'll have to stick with me, but this is all set up. You know, and this person here, he's pissed off too. He's seen that latest video here by Jay Snip 4 and yeah, he's not happy. He's, what can I say, man? You're all going to be connecting the dots here. There's no doubt about it. And this latest one here that's put up by Jay Snip 4 I don't know if you know this YouTuber. His real name's Joe, and listen to this crap. No, actually, I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to promote him. You guys can go listen to the video if you want. But basically, he comes out right from the get-go and tells you how his phone is dead. So he's going to need a new phone now. And that's the look on his face right after he tells, well, I'm going to need a new phone now. You can see the dishonest look right there. It's sad. And, and you go on to listen to it. He goes on to talk about how Lindsay Williams, who, by the way, was promoted by who? Infowars.com, Alex Jones, the flailing arm crazy nut conspirator. 
anyways, yes, Lindsay Williams, he doesn't want to buy his own CDs, but he's asking his own subscribers now to please donate money so he could buy a Lindsay Williams CD, and he says with the excess money, well, he's going to buy himself a phone. There's no doubt about it. People are waking up. Miss Justice, I want to bring this to your attention because many have mentioned it before. Your activities are blocked. You go look at your stuff here. And my friend just came back from a holiday and he went and checked his YouTube channel. The same crap's on there. It's all the Corbett Report and RT News, stuff that he used to watch. And now, all the stuff that he's liked is no longer showing up. I'm not sure if everyone has that problem, but I'm just mentioning it. Now, as far as JSNIP4, this Malacca, I, he was asked back in the day, I should say, he asked me back in the day to be a moderator on this Realist News because, well, as you all know, or may have, may have heard, I predicted the 2008 stock market crash six months earlier. I predicted the rise of silver in 2010. I made a month before it took off. Uh, I went on with a bunch of other things. So he knows I'm, I'm the real cake, the real thing here. So he invites me to his forum only to ban me. But they all had a big whipping at me first here. And, uh, well, I'm going to leave a link down below. But I want you to remember these characters, Mac Electric, because this all ties into um, Montagraph, how he censored, deleted all my comments, approved that Mac was a big fat liar. Big fat liar. He knows me. And, yeah, look at this one here. This is where I was telling them all that the Canadian silver maple leaf coins are 10 times more pure than any other silver coin minted in the world. A coin, not a round. Okay, and I, I led the proof, but I, I've had more proof threads. I, I've started the threads in my past here and, and left all this information and only to have the threads deleted. And you'll also notice how the pictures that were up there They've all been taken out. There's no more images. He also removed my, I left the link to connecting dots two, connecting dots three. He took those away too. Uh, JSNIP4 that is, that same guy there. Okay? We're, we're all realizing what, uh, what he's all about. You know, this whole waking up process, you can't expect to know the truth the moment you step online here. You know, I have friends right now that are in from out of town. And they're all into this Alex Jones. Italian ad, another YouTuber who's nothing but a government shill. There's no doubt about it. I've been on these guys for a long time. And at the end of the thread, you go find out what? He had to go call his college professor to find out what? That I was right. So. On to the next story, because I've had enough with that, those little low lives, but I'm just glad that people are waking up and connecting the dots. He, he, here he is protecting, uh, promoting the web bots, web bots prom promoting InfoWars, and, and now he's in promoting InfoWars. And Alex Jones, yeah. Okay, Google, yes, they're going to build a long cable here across the Pacific Ocean to apparently make your internet quicker. That's what they say if you believe that story. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. No doubt about it, they're going to make their speed faster. I don't know if your speed is going to really change, but it's definitely to help them and not for us. Now, massive extinct volcano found at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. I'm going to show you some pictures here, but basically this is from uh, University of New Hampshire. And I'm going to read the story as you can read, as you watch the, uh, the images. So it says here that the University of New Hampshire scientists on a seafloor mapping mission have discovered a new seamount near Johnson Idol in the Pacific Ocean and the summit of the uh, seamount rises 1,100 meters from the ocean floor and it was discovered in August here by a group of researcher, researchers from uh, UNH and NOAA. It goes on to say here that um, and this is from one of the researchers himself, James Gardner. He says that these seamounts, and I'll show you another image here so you can have an idea how, just how many are potentially out there. He goes on to say that these seamounts are very common, but we don't know about them because most of the places that we go out and map have never been mapped before, he says. And since only low resolution satellite data exists for most of the Earth's seafloor, many seamounts of this size are not resolved in the satellite data, but advanced multi beam echo sounder missions like this one can resolve them. So that's kind of interesting here. They're discovering uh, new mountains. And if you watch my video, I was talking about how scientists are discovering roughly about three to four new species, sea life species, every single day. So, yeah. Now, spacecraft, cemetery. Yeah, again, I'm going to leave you a link down below to everything you see in this video if you, in case you want to go read more about it. And this one is the Jules Verne. And this is the Mir station. And that's the one you're going to read, uh, sorry, look at while I read this story. So it goes on to say here how lying in a remote patch of the waters in the South Pacific Ocean is a graveyard for decommissioned spacecraft known as the Spacecraft Cemetery. And it's a burial site uh, roughly about 3,900 kilometers off the coast of Wellington, New Zealand. 
And it goes on to say that uh, the spacecraft lying within these waters include the Russian spacecraft Mir, which is the one you're looking at right now on the screen. And it was deorbited in 2001 and sent to the cemetery after spending 15 years in space. And it says that this spacecraft here, the Mir one, is 135,000, sorry, yeah, 135,000 uh, kilograms. And it's the most remarkable object here that's been de deposited in this graveyard. But it goes on to say here a little further that uh, the Russians are the biggest dumpers of spacecraft in this area. And it says that since 1978, they've deorbited de 80 of these progress, uh, progress spacecraft and five of the Salute space stations. So yeah, we got space junk here gathering up in the bottom of the ocean. Okay, next story is the predicting the toxic algae that'll reach Washington and Oregon coast. So have you been hearing here recently how there's these um, seals that have been infect affected by the neurotoxins that are released by these algae blooms? Uh, it's not Fukushima, hate to say it, I know they're going to scare the bejesus out of you and not prom promote the real truth, but basically this is the truth and you're going to get it on this station. Okay, so I can try to start over there from the beginning. I'm going to read a little bit of it. It says that in uh, late summer is the peak time for harmful algae, which is, corresponds with the story that we just had here two weeks ago, starting roughly about all these seals that have been suffering from neurotoxin damage. And uh, that the uh, leak, uh, it's, uh, sorry, it can peak time. Uh, it <laughs> late summer is, f oh my God, sorry about that. Late summer is the peak time for harmful ar algae that can turn lakes into toxic scum, canceling fishing trips and fouling water supplies. While the Pacific Northwest doesn't get anything near the activity that turned up that turned parts of the Lake Erie into a bright green slime, our coasts are vulnerable in late summer to this largely unpredictable and in our case unseen menace. But University of Washington researchers researchers have developed a computer model that can track the harmful algae and where it will be carried exactly along the Washington and uh, Oregon beaches. And the study was published here in April in the Journal of Geophysical Research, and it shows that when the model is fed the right data, it could predict most of the toxic, toxic algae events recorded in field studies between the year 2004 and 2007. So that's a little bit of good news here for, uh, well, I guess for the clams and whatnot, for the seals, they still can't get away. There's no way of letting them know that there's about to be a big massive bloom here of neurotoxins. Now another story I just showed here a couple of days ago, and this is all hand in hand because it talks about how the waters off the, um, coast, Calicor the coast of California were warming up here. And I forgot to mention how the warming was related to an unusual weather pattern seen in the Sierra Nevada where recent thunderstorms have pummeled the dry forest land with bursts of rain. Now at the end of that story it went on to talk about that if um, where was that? Oh yeah, right here. If in uh, if the warming continues this summer, he said more subtropical species like the ocean sunfish and albacore, Dorado, yellowtail, yellowfin, bluefin, tuna, and other humble squid could move into water near the shore. These species typically avoid these waters when it's colder. But he goes on to say, but if the warmer persists into the fall, uh, Manuta warned that some cold environment species could suffer reduced growth and poor reproductive success and pollution declines. I'm saying this because I don't want them saying it's all Fukushima when we've already been warned that if the waters warm up, there are certain cold water environment species that will suffer a decline. Uh, the links are down below. Now, I got some great news here, folks. I've been talking about how we're all going to start this uh, Pacific uh, Coast West Tidal Pool Project. Here we go. So like I said, the links are down below. I've broken them up here in regions along the west coast. And uh, well, hopefully you'll join in and share your info. Okay, here's that crazy footage I was telling you about. Yeah, I was shocked. For someone to say that there's no birds no crows for 200 kilometers on British Columbia's Sunshine Coast and yet here I am right in downtown Victoria visiting a friend he tells me go look at the building across the street there's usually birds on the top of that roof yeah there's the crows that those are the birds he was talking about I was I was shocked when I saw <laughs> I believe there were spiralings but just massive amounts 
So yes, uh, alive and kicking here on the west coast. Uh, no problem there, folks. Yeah, he couldn't even find one bird. Not a single bird yeah, on the west coast. 